Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is The Ramble. We go until midnight tonight from New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, from the west coast of the United States, it's time to check in. With Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Yes, it is. Good to see you. Yeah, or hear you. <laughs> yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Yes, yes. yeah. How are you doing out there? Good, good. I just uh, worked with our old friend Rob Schneider and uh, had a good time. Yeah. How's Rob? Rob's good. He's uh, He's got quite a draw now. So. Really? Yeah. Huh. I think. I for, you know, forget, he's been in, uh, he's been over 70 films which is pretty incredible i yeah i didn't realize that even if a lot of them are not great it's still impressive i thought yeah did you mention to him that i'd like to talk to him i did he's gonna try to get hold of you so. oh good good great I, I like rob you know i mean i've always found him to be a nice guy he's a very nice guy yeah he's got uh some people don't like him because of his views on vaccination which uh He's had for quite a while. He's really into the uh, health food and uh, vit- I think he actually owns a vitamin factory. So he's yeah, but really into the health thing. So, and that's you know that's that's his his position, and he has a right to it. Uh, right. Some of his political opinions, though, on things I don't agree with. But you know, I don't I don't choose my friends based on their political opinions. <laughs> You know, if I did, I'd have no friends. Yeah, I think we talked about that a while ago, about so many people seem to think in lockstep anymore with politics, so you just got to put that aside. Yeah, you know? just, it's, not, it's not important uh, to a relationship. You right. Know, um, you, know, and, and, uh, you know, I don't think I've ever asked you your politics. I, I, uh, my politics probably would go, uh, I think it's passe. Now, I kind of like the... Uh, the old John F. Kennedy Democrat Party. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what don't you like about the Democratic Party today? Um, I think it's got a little, maybe a little too left. I don't know. It's not a question of too left. You know, it, it's, well, they, they use this term a lot, and I really hate this term, but I'm going to use it here. But they've gotten a little too woke. Is that a, Yeah, exactly. That's what I meant, yeah. You know, in other words, uh, I... I I've always hated people who censor people. I've always, you know, ever since I was a kid and I went to that House and American Activity subcommittee right. hearing and I saw a radio guy's career completely destroyed just by asking, are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? I've been against any kind of censoring, okay? People have a right to be entitled to what they want to say. And especially, yeah, that, yeah, you said the censorship used to come from the right. Now it's more from the left. Well, especially in the area of comedy, you know, yeah. I think that that where that's where it really bothers me. But any of the arts, you know, uh, I, I mean, I don't care if anybody's to the right or to the left. Uh, I don't think that should impede his art. And I don't think because he made some kind of little mistake uh, twenty years ago that he should have to pay <laughs> for it now. Um, you know, people change. They change their opinions about things and so on, and uh, it's no different uh, today. I mean, j- just because somebody said something 20 years ago doesn't mean he believes the same thing today. And what happened with the House on american Activity Subcommittee is people who were communists 20 years earlier or believed in the Communist Party or believed in uh, just leftist causes were called to account for that in spite of the fact that in all that time they may have completely changed. 
That's true, and I think that a lot of people got caught up in the Communist Party in the 30s because things were so bad in the Depression. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, they were looking for alternatives to this corporate and, and, and uh, uh, system that had, uh, had brought them to despair, actually. <laughs> which is which is still doing today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, but uh, but but it was really bad then because people were starving and they were looking for an alternative. And this idea of at least socialism, if not communism, seemed to be a good idea at the time. But now you go to the fifties and it's twenty years later. People change, times change, circumstances change, and yet. They wanted to accuse them of what they did earlier on in life, you know. And then they wanted you to name names. That was the other thing. They wanted you to be a snitch. Yeah, but, I, I really hate that. Well, that, that's, that's asking somebody to bring out the worst part of them, the desire to snitch on somebody else to save your own ass. I mean, come on, you know. So uh, today, the, the left wing is... Really, very, you know, I mean, uh, uh, I'll give you a good example. Uh, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, right, who is our uh, senator from the state of New York. I'll never vote for the bitch ever again, okay? And the reason I won't is because of what she did to Al Franken in Congress. I mean, he was one of the best left senators we had. Okay, Uh, I hate to say that because I knew him years earlier. I used to play pinball with him, and I just knew him as a comic. But somehow, somehow he was able to change himself into a politician, and he became a very, in Congress, I felt he represented my views more than any other congressman. And she got him thrown out and pushed him out because of that stupid photo he took on an airplane as a as a gag joke picture. The gag joke, yeah. Yeah, and 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 she was she was terrible. She was just terrible. And I I said to my, myself, I, I'm not I can't vote for this woman. You know, she's almost uh, she's everything I hated about people who were on the Un American Activity subcommittee. Asking, are you now or have you ever been a communist? I mean, it was just that kind of thing. And I just want nothing to do with her, you know. And she sends me, you know, donation things all the time. And I just, it just galls me, just galls me. But didn't she uh, turn on, uh, the, was it turned on Clinton or something too? I remember there was something about her and... There was she either a, turned on Hillary or Bill or oh, something. She t- I'm sure she did. I'm sure she did. I mean, she's always, and it's not that she's a feminist or anything like that. She's just simply a politician who wants to get votes. And she figures this is a way of getting votes. It's it's terrible. It's just terrible. And you know what's happened? What's interesting is everything flip-flops. Yes, the, 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 the left wing has kind of become the censorship wing of the party. Shouldn't say that. Shouldn't do this. Oh, look what he said. Let's not ever let him work again, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's the uh, that's the right the left wing now, and the right wing is defending Putin. <laughs> you know, yeah. defending communism. Now, where did the that all? The right ha- wing likes Russia, and the left wing hates Russia. <laughs> well, I mean, there's every reason to hate Russia. But I mean, wasn't there a time when the when the right wing hated anything to the left? And what's more left than Russia? Yeah. Even today, everything is flip flopped. Yeah, I mean they're communists. Okay, that's about it. They don't say they're communists anymore. But let's face it, with Putin in power, they're communists. Yeah. All right. Well, because Putin was in the KGB. You know, he has this whole KGB mentality. But I mean, here, uh, you know, you have you have a president like Trump defending Putin, and you're going, what happened to the right wing? Weren't the right wings opposed to a guy like Putin? Weren't they opposed to anything Russian? Yeah. yeah. So, it's a weird world we live in. Do you recall were there any big stars that were actually hammered by the uh, HUAC? Uh 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. A lot of a lot of them lost jobs. There were actors who couldn't work for years because of that. Zero Mostel. Zero Mostel is the first one that comes to to mind. Uh, I'm trying to remember the female actress who was black blackballed from working for quite a while. Um, what's funny and and, and directors. Uh, who were not able to work. It was interesting that in, uh, I can't remember what year it came out, but a few years back, a picture called, came out called The Front, which was about something that actually existed, in which people would front for blacklisted writers, as an example. So if I fronted for you and you were a blacklisted writer, you'd hand me your scripts, I'd go turn them in under my name, I would then take the check and split it with you. Wow. Okay? And this was going on all the time during that blacklisting era. Well, The Front is about that. Starred Woody Allen. And uh, it wasn't a Woody Allen comedy. He didn't direct it or anything else. But he wanted to do it because of the subject matter. And all the people in that film, most of the people in that film were people who had been blacklisted. The director of the film was blacklisted. The writers of the film were blacklisted. A lot of the actors, like Mostel, who were in it, were blacklisted. And um, uh, it was it was terrible what went on in Hollywood at that time. Just so terrible. that was the uh, first version of canceling. Well, cancel culture, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say so. You know. Uh, I always tell the story. I've told this any number of times because it's the thing that shaped my politics for the rest of my life. Is that my father wanted? They were UAC, which was the House on American Activity Subcommittee, were holding hearings in San Francisco at the City Hall, and my father wanted to go down to protest it. And I said, "Where are you going?" He said, "I'm going down to City Hall to protest uh, the House on American Activity Subcommittee because uh, you know they're doing terrible stuff." And um, so I was very proud of my father. I said, can I go with you? And I, I think, how old was I at the time? I don't know. I think I was maybe, uh, I'd say 11 years old, something like that. And uh, so my father's outside protesting. And I said, Dad, I'm going to go inside and see if I can see the hearings. So he said, okay, go. I'll be down here. Right. So I go up the, the big, beautiful stairs at the city hall at the very top. They're holding these hearings, and I go in, and because I'm a little kid, they don't stop me, you know? Little kids can get away with anything. Yeah. And I, I stand there. I don't know if I stand there. At some point I sat, can't remember. But all of a sudden, they call up this guy, and I can't remember his name right now. And he was a guy who hosted my favorite radio show at the time, which was a morning show called San Francisco's Story. And what it was was he just told stories every morning about San Francisco and about its history. And, you know, uh, 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 here's a, a little tale from back when the uh, earthquake happened and blah, 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 blah. You know, and I love that show. Just, you know, and it wasn't it wasn't political or anything like that. And all of a sudden, he's called up before the committee. Are you now, or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? I refuse to testify on the grounds that might tend to incriminate me. And the next thing you know, I turn on the radio the next morning. He's not there. Wow. Okay? I saw a man's life literally destroyed in a matter of seconds because of this committee. And I, from that moment on, said, I will always fight this sort of thing. I will always be against this sort of thing. And any time I see anything raising its ugly head that reminds me of this thing, I'm going to be against it. Well, today I'm saying that a lot. You know, I said, because uh, saying to somebody, hey, remember when you did that tweet back in uh, 10 years ago? Uh, uh, that was sexist. You're a sexist. And then you, you can't work now. Then you can't work. I mean, you you got to know that you're only one joke away from not being able to work, right? Yeah. You know, it's got to be terrifying for you. Yeah, if somebody just uh, <laughs> you can say something. Someone's got their phone out. That's all over the internet, and it's, you're done. Yeah. Right. You know. Um, 
I, I the, think the first version of that was uh, Michael Richards. Uh. Michael Richards was just stupid. You know what he? You know what he was doing? He was getting flop sweat. He wasn't doing well on stage that night, and all of a sudden he decided to go to where he went to in order to try and get a laugh. I think he was kind of thought he was kind of being like Lenny Bruce, but he wasn't. Because Lenny used to have a bit in which he said every every word for a different racial group you could possibly say over and over and over and over again. And then when he was through, he said, now those words don't sound so bad to you, do they? You know, and his mm-hmm. point was is that what you have to do is to take these words and not empower them by making them illegal or saying you can't say them, but you, imp- you disempower them by saying them over and over again and making them mean absolutely nothing. Yeah, that's so true. Give, these people give the word so much power, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, uh, it, just, it just really always bothered me that, that uh, you know, that the, the left was becoming this way because it was reminding me of that kind of censorship that I saw there at the City Hall that morning in which people's careers are ruined by it. I mean, I'll give you an example of something. One example that I love to bring up is Louis C.K., who to this day has a hard time working, okay, at least in television. I mean, he was one of the most successful comedians around. He had how many different TV shows he was producing for FX? A couple of TV shows, yeah. Yeah, all of a sudden, one day, boom, nothing, zero, zilcho. He had a movie coming out. Didn't hardly got distributed. Got dumped by the movie company. Okay, he then got the rights to the movie, but nobody would run it because it was a Louis C.K. film. Now, what do you remember? What Louis C.K. did? I mean, some people don't even remember. <laughs> yes. Do you remember what Louis C.K. did? Uh huh. What did he do? I think he invited women to his room so he could uh, pleasure himself in front of them. Well, but it wasn't. I don't know if he was even pleasuring himself. He, he there were about three women there who were all there to seek his curry his favor because, after all, he's an important guy in TV. He's an important comic, and uh, and as I remember him, a good guy to hang out with, you know. So anyway, he. Um, He pulls, he says, do you mind if I pull out my penis? Those were his exact words. And none of the women said no. So he pulled it out. Now, first of all, perfect gentleman, he asked permission first. All right? Uh, And I just don't know how that's a terrible thing. You know? I mean, no, I mean, I wouldn't, if, if Louis C.K. said to me, do you mind if I pull my penis out? I'd say, well, it would make me feel uncomfortable. Yes. <laughs> all right. But none of these women even left the room. They all had the right to turn around, walk out the door and leave the room. And they didn't. So, I mean, what did he do? And that ruined his entire career. Now, granted, he was on the leading edge of Me Too. Okay, he was like about the third guy to get popped for this. Weinstein being the first, okay. Now, for a moment, just compare Weinstein to what Louis C.K. did. Weinstein, a rapist. <laughs> and they put, it, they put it on the same level as Weinstein, right? Yeah. You know. So, I mean, uh, it, 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 was, it was terrible what they did to Louis C.K., and uh, he should be allowed back into the business, and he should be afforded every opportunity because he's a very talented man. And I think what they did to him was terrible. And I, 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 I don't think he handled it right particularly. He admitted to it because he figured, by, you know, you feel if you admit your mistake, people will forgive you. But that's, no, that's, not, the, that's the dagger through the heart. When that's the that, dagger through the heart today. Yeah, in the old days you'd say, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, my bad. I shouldn't have done that. I'll never do it again. Thank you very much. Go on making your TV shows. But we don't do that anymore. There is no reason for anybody to apologize for what they're doing because all it's going to do is make things worse. You know? So, I mean, what happened with him was, was terrible just terrible uh and and i have to bring up kevin spacey 
I'm not here to defend Kevin Spacey. I always found the man a little obnoxious and terrible. But the fact is that so far they've they've tried to you know they've tried to try him and things like that. So far they've never come up with anything that he's guilty of. And yeah, and that's uh, I guess uh, I guess a law doesn't count. <laughs> well, no, I mean he went he he went to uh, he went to court in uh, um, up in uh, uh, where do you call it uh, up in Connecticut, I think, somewhere like that. Uh, and there was another case in which he was accused of raping a uh, underage kid or a kid who was underage at the time. All those cases have been dropped against him. He has not been found guilty of anything. And there are a couple of things in England I think they're trying him on, but that, that doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So my question is, if he's been tried and never found guilty, shouldn't we let him work again? Yeah, uh, if... Uh you believe in our justice system if not i guess uh i guess you get convicted for not being and by the way all the stuff he was accused of was gay activities because obviously kevin spacey is gay but uh you know i mean the one trial after another and and he he still can't work you would think after the first trial and they said you're not guilty they'd say okay we'll start working for a while and we'll let the other stuff flesh itself self out yeah. I'm not um, here to defend Kevin Spacey. I'm just here to say, what did he do that they've proven? Yeah, he got the he got the fatty arbuckle treatment. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, Weinstein, that's another story altogether. I love the Weinstein story because I don't know about you, but I even knew what he was doing, and I'm not in movies. I had no idea that it was that horrible, yeah. Oh, I heard horrible stories really? about wow. Harvey Weinstein. I knew about it for years. So did all of Hollywood, okay? Now, I admit, he's guilty as hell. He's terrible. What a terrible, vile human being, especially to take advantage of women who thought maybe you'd give them a break, you know? Using your position for that sort of thing, and especially because he's such a disgusting-looking, vile human being. It makes it even <laughs> worse, right? I often said to Marjorie, I said, if Harvey Weinstein came up and patted you on the ass, what would you do? She said, I'd turn around and slap him. I said, what if it were George Clooney? She said, I, I, I'd go, guess he just slapped me on the ass. <laughs> you know. So, I mean, part of what Harvey's guilty of is being so undeniably disgusting, you know, yeah. visual. <laughs> yeah. But nevertheless, he took advantage of <laughs> he took advantage of women for years. And all of a sudden they all came forward. After one came forward, another one came forward, and finally they were like, I don't know, a hundred or some amazing amount. And uh yeah, but w w they kept their mouth shut at the time. Now, you could say, well, they were afraid of opening their mouths, and I, I kind of agree with that. You know, that makes sense. But nevertheless, it's, you know, it, it, he, it, it, Hollywood knew it all along and didn't do anything about it, okay? They just made, they oh, even in one Academy Awards, somebody made a joke about Harvey and what he did to women. And everybody laughed, that, and yeah. Har Harvey was in the audience, and he was laughing. Everyone's laughing, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, the, Hollywood gave him a sense of permission. And then they all sit around later on and go, is it a chair what Harvey did? We can't let him get away with this, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, where were you when he was doing it? When you could have saved these women the disgusting thing of having to go down on that bloated piece of crap you know i can say that now because he can't ruin me in hollywood he can't ruin <laughs> I think dennis miller said harvey looked like he looked like shrek with an erection <laughs> <laughs> really did dennis miller yeah. say that <laughs> oh boy oh boy oh boy but you know, so but I just, I just, I, I do think that people should be called to account for their actions. I think the things like Harvey did were terrible, uh, but on the other hand, uh, I, I also think that 
we have to be careful about accusing everybody. So you accuse Louis C.K. at the same time that you accuse Weinstein, and who's he being compared to? Harvey Weinstein, and it's nothing like what Harvey Weinstein no, did. Uh, at least the good news is Louis is Louis did win a Grammy for his uh, album last year, and uh, yeah. he is doing well at uh, at filling up clubs. Yeah, but he, he's not. But the TV's gone. Yeah, you know? yeah, he hasn't got the career he had. Hey, listen, you know we're running out of time here. It's always a pleasure to talk with you, my friend. Always, my friend. You are the uh, you are the the uh, a, a a great inciter of my ability to talk. I, well, I like did, your um, I like your history. Does that make sense at all? What I just said, kind of, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it didn't make any sense at all. Anyway, thank you so much, Larry Bubbles Brown. Yay! Catch you next week. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet. The Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, thank you very much, Larry. See you next week. Yes, okay. Hello, everybody. How are you? How you doing? Oh, my eyes are tearing tonight. You know, I've always got something wrong with me, but at this age, there's always something wrong with you. No, we have, we have uh, what is it, 10.6 on, uh, on, the, on the pollen scale? And my eyes have just been burning up today. Anyway, I keep trying these various uh, potions for my eyes and hoping some of them will work, but none of them ever do. Anyway, let's see here. Let's bring everybody in here that's waiting, at least at the present time. And uh, um, we've got uh, Kevin, and we've got Josh Wheeler, and we've got, well, there would be Jeff, but apparently he went away for the moment. Uh, but... Uh, Hi, Jeff. Jeff, you there? Oh, well. Hi, Josh. Hi, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, eyes are burning. Boy, are they... It, it, it's, I've been screwed up the last two or three hours, man. Really? Same thing, huh? All of them, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I... I uh, uh, I don't know what it is. I, I've been fairly good uh, ever since I had my eyes done and not have them burn a lot. But when the pollen gets really bad, it depends on, you know, it doesn't, the pollen count doesn't really matter as much as what pollen is going crazy at the moment, you know. And I don't know what I'm allergic to, so I probably, I should probably should go to an allergist and find out. Yeah, it can do no good, it just does it anyway. Yeah, so I, yeah. I just yeah. put up with it. Well, Marjorie, Marjorie goes like every month for a, a shot uh, for her allergies. And and none of this. They they taught her how to shoot up, okay? How to take a hypodermic needle and stick it in her in her butt, and uh, put all this uh, this stuff in her to take care of her when she was itching like crazy. It never worked. Never worked. So, what can I say? What what what, Jeff? What are you looking at, Jeff? Maybe heroin. Maybe heroin. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, at my age, I was thinking, I was thinking, you know, if they suddenly said tomorrow, Alex, you know, you don't have many, many more weeks to live or something like that, uh, I would probably try heroin. Well, yeah, you know, it's a good time to try heroin, after all. You know, isn't it a painkiller? You know? Yeah, it might get a little fentanyl, too. Yeah, well, no, fentanyl will kill me. And I, is that, well, that's it's a good way terrible. of committing suicide, I suppose, is overdosing on fentanyl. But, um, well, that's what you usually get when you get heroin nowadays. They throw a little of that in just for free. Well, don't they? Don't doctors prescribe fentanyl for various they things? Do, yeah. yeah, they do. So, how do they know how much to give somebody? I mean, do they? Can they give you just the right amount that it won't kill you? That's why. Yeah, I mean, it's mind. like microdoses. <laughs> micro <laughs> microdoses. <laughs> well, I've been told you can actually overdose by getting fentanyl on your skin. Oh, that came out when it first came out, but I don't think that's true anymore. But I don't know. A lot of drugs are can you know seep through the skin. Yeah, and can do them. You do it. But I remember when they first came out, they said that you know the cops had to wear rubber gloves and it would go through your skin and everything else. But I don't think that happened. Yeah, but you know, fentanyl isn't a big deal anymore because the press isn't making a big deal of it. 
<laughs> right, you right, know? exactly. Uh, uh, right now they're on the AI. That's the latest bugaboo. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And, and once they get tired of AI, I don't know. Will they ever get around back around to Trump again? I don't know. You know. Oh yeah, they will. <laughs> don't, don't don't fret. Well, I'm telling you, I got I I got you know we've been ta- we were talking the last couple of nights with um, um uh, what's his name um the ex cop calls here Alan Alan. Or Phil. And, one. and Phil. And they were both saying, oh, you know, you got to see this thing. You got to see the actual videos of what went on with that guy in New York with the guy in the subways. Yeah. And Phil sends it to me last night. You know, he always sends me stuff. I very seldom look at it, you know. But uh, he, he sent it to me. So I watched it. And I wrote him back and I said, so what are you trying to prove by this video? Oh, they turned him on his side. Oh, wow. Isn't that wonderful? After strangling him to death, they turned him on his side. Oh, well, that's enough to get him off. You know, I mean. I think I've I've looked at probably eight or ten of those videos, and I don't see what the hell they're trying to defend. You can't. Well, you can't. As I was saying last night, how can you defend it? The guy's dead. Right. You know, and obviously at the hands of somebody who shouldn't have been strangling him in the first place. Right. You know. Oh, but he was a former Marine, so I guess that gives him the right to do it? And then they're saying, what one... I was saying know? last night, I said that they're not, they're trained to do that in combat, but they're not trained to do it on the street, yeah, so they well, need to kind of figure that one out first. Well, in combat, you want it to be lethal. Right. And so that's probably the only form of it you were taught. Correct. And that's the form he did uh, on, on that guy in the subway it just i don't know just somebody's dead and i'm sick of this stuff you know at least it wasn't a gun <laughs> you know yes jeff i think that when they're learning how to do this, get a little closer to your mic when they do this to learn yeah how to do this joke thing that they do it to other guys and of course, they're supposed to survive at the end. Well, they do it to other guys in practice, but right. then, other of course, movies. there's always somebody there to say, "Okay, that's enough. Stop it. We don't want them passing out or anything." Well, they can yeah. pass off a little bit, <laughs> but they better not. You kill pass them. out a little bit. I think uh, passing out is an absolute. You either pass out or you don't pass out. You know. And then they had another guy on him, and he was sitting there helping him. That I could see. Yeah. Well, yeah, he was holding him, his hands down. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it was, it's a, it's a tragic um, situation, right but I don't see any difference between this guy and Bernie Getz, who years ago went down into the subway and started shooting guys because he felt they were threatening, you know? I mean, this, this went, this went on, that was one of the most celebrated cases at that time. And um, uh, he managed to leave somebody for the rest of his life unable to walk. You know. Yeah, just a couple of ex cops trying to make it justified, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, I just, I just felt that uh, the Phil was like, and 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 Alan were both saying, "Oh, well, you know, he did the right thing. He put him on his side." Yeah, after he was almost dead. You know, uh, you do that when you've made... All you need to do is bring somebody to the point where they pass out, okay? And then you let go. But he kept going. The guy was out for a couple of minutes there, if you look at the video. But, uh, and you didn't even know about that story, right, before we told it to you. No, I didn't. I just yeah. caught a part of it and didn't really pay attention to it until I started looking it up today. And yeah. Want to going on yeah Yeah. of course yeah Uh, you can't you can't tell you know you got 18 different you know views of it they're all the same and most of the time the media is talking over it or they're blaring out faces and you can't tell what goes on so you just gotta figure out what happens in court yeah yeah well anyway i mean it'll be tried in court and uh uh fine you know it says it should be yeah. Uh, Think about three years. Hmm? You really cleaned up the subway. 
What? They made it uh, safe. They made it safe? Yeah. Not really. Not ago? not really. Not really. You know what's happened? I, something happened that I that I predicted to Marjorie a while back when we were in the midst of COVID. I said, when this thing is all over, you just watch what happens to this town. I mean, it's going to be like Wild West City because people are just going to go crazy from having been cooped up yeah. for two years, right? And that's exactly what's happened. You know, it's insane, supposedly, in the subways. I don't take the subway unless I absolutely have to, you know? And and uh, it, it's dangerous. Uh, and um, it, it, they've never been terrific, but boy, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's supposedly it's not very good down there. Now. And then you have rats stealing pizza too, so you know, that, that happens too. So. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you, have you been following this thing at all, Josh? No, not that particular one, not really. Yeah. I saw the headlines and that sort of thing and uh i'm uh that's about all i know about it yeah just what i've heard overheard here you know and maybe just headlines i caught but that's about it yeah. was this the police no like no, off-duty no. police or no, just no civilian? no no this was a guy a marine an ex-marine yeah who uh some some guy was in the subway uh, a homeless guy who is also right. a michael jackson impersonator i don't know I yeah don't know. To go hand in hand with each other, but and he uh, he was, I guess, acting up in the subway. People okay. felt people yeah. felt threatened by him. But listen, I've been in the subway any number of times, and there've been guys down there who I felt threatened by. You know, they yeah, I mean, which is you know understandable, but I mean, that's what the you know police are for and the transit authority or what well apparently whatever. apparently there was no you know when you're driving yeah. when you're in the subway and you're right. between stations uh you can bet your life that you're not going to be able to call a cop you know yeah right right and, but i mean you know taking some action to hold over until you get to the stop is you know well, I'm, I, I would imagine understandable, if, if but, he know. was doing this to this guy for maybe, what do they say, 15 minutes or something, or mm -hmm. some, some inordinate amount of time. And they certainly, would have, they certainly would have hit a, a station at that point. Yeah, or, you and, know. And I'm surprised I'm, somebody didn't run out and get a cop, you know. Yeah, I was going to say, and I would assume there's a way, if there's some kind of situation, for someone to alert the uh, also, doctor or... Also, halfway between the end of the train and the beginning of the train is a is a uh, person who sits there with the window down at every station, looking both ways to make sure everybody's in the car before he closes the door. He's the guy that closes the door. Yeah. And certainly, somebody could have run out and very easily gotten to him, or to right. the or to the conductor in the front. And uh, and done something about it, you know. Said we have something a, a, a problem going on back there. But don't they have emergency pull stations on those cars? I don't remember last. I was well. They do, but time. you know, sometimes you really don't want to do that because all it's going to do is stop you in the middle of the of the of the uh, between two stations. Oh, they don't call up front or anything. No, no, no. I don't Just think. I don't think. There, I don't think there's any way you can talk to the conductor. You can pull a thing and say stop the train. You know, uh, we've got an emergency here. But. Like Bart has a like an intercom you can call up front and oh, say, okay, see. this that, is going on up here. But but anyway, all I'm saying is this, again, is a guy who, he was taught, he was trained by the Marines. He's not trained to be non-lethal, <laughs> you know? Uh, and, um, trained to be lethal. Huh? He's trained to kill people. Yeah, absolutely he's trained to kill people. Well, he carried out his job. Yeah, yep, that's for damn sure. Had he had his uniform. <laughs> he gets an A plus. Right? Well, he didn't have a uniform. He hasn't been in the Marines for a while, I don't right. think. But then they're saying, oh, he's a uh, he's an honored Marine. He got this medal and he got that medal and so that's on. That's fine. On. Yeah, that's fine. But this guy's still dead, yeah. and and I don't care how many medals he's got. <laughs> what he did killed somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't yeah. have it. We don't have. I could, I, 
Hmm. Probably see it if he was wielding a knife or, you know, throwing around a gun or something like that, and he did that. Maybe that's a different story. Well, I mean, as he wasn't I, doing that. As I said, you know, if he felt threatening to the people there, uh, a lot of times I've been on subway trains and there have been people that have just been crazy, you know, and you feel a little threatened by them and it makes you feel <laughs> uncomfortable. Maybe you move to the other side of the train, you know, the, the car or something like that to get away from them. But, uh, Hell, I, I have a, vi a video of some guy taking his clothes off in the middle of a ride, you know, and just <laughs> butt-ass naked for the for the rest of the trip. Uh, and, you know, th those kind of things go on in the subway all the time, and I'm sure this guy probably made people feel uncomfortable and threatened. But that, that doesn't carry with it the death penalty, you know? And you have to be very careful when you when you use this. I mean, I don't know why they didn't teach him in the Marines. You just don't do this once you get back into civilian life. But the problems with people who are trained by the military is there's no kill switch. You know, they let him out. They say, say goodbye. Thank you so much for your service. And by the way, now that we've left you half crazy, you know, and insensitive to uh, insensitive to uh, 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 pain and suffering. Uh, we will uh, we will just say goodbye to you and let you on your own. And then he goes down to a subway and did what he did, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by the way, there were three guys there. They could have subdued this guy without choking him, you know. So uh, it, it's just it's it's sad. But what's more sad is that you know that I get these things from Phil saying, oh, uh, and what he sent it to me from was uh, what was the what, it, it wasn't even a standard kind of resource to get this stuff from. It was something like... Oh, he said he got it from some police publication. Police publication, yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, and they're always going to defend this kind of action, you know. Uh, one of the people saying that it was, it was fine and it was okay uh, was Bernard Carrick in a tweet. And Bernard mm. Carrick is the former police chief of New York City who wound up in jail okay, in prison for a couple of years. So I don't know yeah. if I trust him as a source. Yeah. So uh, anyway, what's new, uh, Josh? By the way, there's nobody else calling tonight. Uh, <coughs> Not a whole lot new. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's the... Uh... <coughs> Same old, I guess, going this week, but the, uh, you know, I didn't watch it, but I know CNN had Trump on for their hour and a half, two hours, whatever well, they did. Well, I'll tell you, that thing, you know, that thing is causing CNN no end of grief. Well, I mean, it's hard to feel sorry, you know, for him at this point. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not as if... I mean, it wasn't surprising, right? I mean, well, here's what they did. Here, here are a couple know. of things they did wrong. Number one, they called it a town hall meeting, okay? Right. And then they said well, it wasn't. All, all the people in the town hall in the audience were right. Trump supporters. They, yeah, they said seems, that. You know, yeah. they were. They said they were. Dem they were Republicans and they were Trump supporters. Right. Now, if you're holding a town hall, don't you have a nice mixture of everybody? Well, that's the idea, but you know, Trump is isn't going to do that. Yeah, but yeah, but isn't isn't you know? Uh, I mean, last night again, you know, uh, 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 Phil was complaining that oh well, you know, that woman shouldn't have gone after him. It was a town hall. The audience is supposed to ask him questions, but all the questions cool. from the audience were softball. They all loved him. They laughed at all his jokes against you know the woman he raped. You know, I mean, they were laughing at him. Yeah, I mean, what, what, so what woman was he saying? The, the moderator? No, is, no, is that who he was talking about? No, 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 no. The woman who uh, they they found him uh, guilty of uh, sexual harassment or something. Oh, okay. And, yeah. yeah. Um, and he pulled some joke about her again. She's thinking right. of suing him again because he again mm -hmm. did other Ooh. things which again were. Uh, you know the the thing yeah, that he, yeah. she got the but is is that who Phil was saying shouldn't have gone after him? No, 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 no. That's what I was asking. It, about. it was the host, this woman, right? The moderator. The, the so. moderator is the host. 
Well, at one well, point, but he, I said, mean, he said, he said, you're a very mean woman or something to that extent. Yeah, I mean, that's his typical, that's, you know. Yeah, but, you know, we, 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 we shouldn't just say, oh, that's his typical this or he, the, no. the, it's his typical it that. This is a guy who's running for president of the United yeah. States, for crying out loud. Yeah, and he right. sh should have a little bit more restraint than that. Uh, he should, but he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, well, then why does anybody think he should be president of the United States? That's a good question. I mean, and, uh, you know, we'd have to ask them because I don't think it, and I, you know, I don't support it. I mm -hmm. mean, y you know, he's not qualified at all, but look, they're under some sort of hypnotism or something like that. I mean, you know, hypnosis or whatever. I, I mean, I don't know because I just, like you said, I don't trust any of these people, and I laugh. I mean, I see Mitt Romney, you know, the day before, the day of, or the day after that, or whatever. You know, oh, he's he is not qualified to be president. I'll lay a hundred dollar bill down right now. It says if he wins, Romney will serve in his cabinet. You know, because <laughs> that's what you know pieces yeah. of shit like him do. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. I mean, I don't. You know, like I said, for as much as people think Romney's decent, he's a snake like all the rest of them. You know, I mean, it's, it, if he thinks he can get just a wee bit closer to the power, that's what he'll do, you know. And then when it's all said and done, he'll write a book and say, oh, he was a train wreck. He was just, it was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it, you know. Yeah, but she didn't mind doing it and taking the money at the same time. You know, so, uh, you know, that it's hard to, I mean, I hear, you know, CNN pushing back and you know they have their homeboy anderson cooper go on there and talk about how you should be open to everyone's ideas and if you only interview people you agree with and look i get that okay no, i anderson, understand you know, i understand what I'm anderson not, was trying to say but he said it wrong yeah i mean yeah. look i'm not you know he, mentally challenged okay that's the right word you know today okay we used to say retarded but now we say mentally challenged okay i like retarded not, but, i think it's a but, funny word you know that's that's this wasn't a debate between two people who didn't agree, uh, you know. I mean, it, this wasn't, you know, like Newt Gingrich debating, you know, Bernie Sanders, exchanging whatever. This was just a person on there that you know is basically a criminal. <laughs> and I mean, among other things, so it, it it's not about hearing other people's ideas and all that. As you know, I'm as for that as a person can get, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm as open-minded about all that kind of stuff and everything as you can get, but that wasn't what happened. What happened was they basically gave him an infomercial. <laughs> well, no, also, also you know? they allowed an hour's worth of lies to be spewed. Yeah. And the fact is that a responsible journalist, as this woman was, should challenge that somebody should yeah. challenge it they shouldn't let things like that go unchallenged yeah I mean, and, and what know, phil and was griping about was that she wasn't she was challenging everything he was saying well, that's well the, i mean you yeah. know when someone asked to be the president of the united states i would think that's and then they said we, we this know. is supposed to be this is supposed to be a town hall aren't people supposed to ask questions of him yeah, yes I mean, but but that's where cnn made their mistake they should have said half the audience is going to be again him and 50% of the audience is going to be his people, okay? And that's the way it's going to be. However, if they did that, Trump would have never shown up. Right. And, and you then, know, and, and, and that would yeah. That would be his prerogative and his right. I mean, I get that he's not the only politician that isn't really going to do these town halls, you know, fair and square and free screen questions and all that. And listen, there's some chicken shit Democrats and, and, uh, and, and whatnot that would only do it in those cases. So I get that, but you know, and that's fine. So, uh, you know, yeah, but they were so, they so desperately wanted him because they're so yeah, hurting right. for ratings. Right. That they saw this yes. as a ratings bonus and they would probably then start kissing the ass of an audience who wouldn't have thought ever to watch CNN. Right. You know, yeah, that's all it was. I mean, it wasn't to inform the public. It wasn't to, uh, 
you know, raise the level of debate. It wasn't in the name of fairness and the free exchange of ideas. Well, that's what I'm saying. There was no free exchange of ideas. There was no debate. There wasn't. I mean, it was an infomercial. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they paid him an appearance fee. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, and I wouldn't be surprised if he asked for one because he's that arrogant and they're that stupid. Yep. You You're know, right. I mean, You're right. you know, I'm <laughs> a perfect match. It's Kevin, is I mean, there's... that's. Yeah, you know. Kevin, is there some kind of a ball game on tonight? Yeah, I'm watching the uh, the uh, Warriors game. Oh, maybe that's why I'm not getting that many calls tonight. Yeah, yeah. probably. It's possibly the last game. They're way behind. Oh, really? Well, they're not way behind maybe, right now. It's maybe, you know, maybe folks, Phil turned it, everybody off last night. That could be too. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, usually Friday uh, nights we're filled up with people. But I mean, yeah. at some point, you know. It's it's fine to support a person, and I don't have any problem with that. But when people do things that are wrong or whatever, just because you like them is fine. But, you know, they're the ones crying about the open exchange of ideas and all that and all that. But they're not they're not the ones willing to participate in it. Right. I mean, I I mean, and he's not here. and, And so I get it. But. I don't genuinely see Phil as a person interested in the free exchange of ideas. Phil is interested in you accepting what he has to say as being right. And past that, he's not interested. To, to me, that's what I normally see or witness. Well, you know, he, he always and, he always takes a pre-programmed position on stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know and, and, and Trump's deal, I mean... That's what I'm saying. There was no free exchange of ideas. There was no informing the public. He hasn't said anything that he doesn't always say. It's the same stuff over and over and over again. If you're not informed by now about what Trump thinks on an issue or has to say, I mean, you know, I'm sorry, but, <laughs> you know, that then you're an idiot. So go on the Internet and look it up. You don't need to watch it on CNN. And and they don't need to be le- uh, le- allowing him to broadcast that stuff. I mean, look, if they want to do it, it's fine. I didn't watch it. Listen, this is America. If somebody, they got if the somebody, right to put it on. This, I got the right if, to not if watch If somebody it. comes on my show and says something erroneous or something I consider yeah. insightful right. or whatever, I'm yeah. going to challenge that person. And that's exactly what this woman did. I mean, yeah. she was the only sensible person in the whole room. Everybody else was a raving maniac. Yeah, the I mean, audience it, was know. cheering him on. They none of them were going boo or anything like that, you know. And then the, when he pulled a joke about this E. Jean Carroll, uh, and and uh, calling her, uh, you know, whatever he calls her. Yeah, uh, I didn't hear it. But they I, were all I, applauded and laughed and thought that was hilarious. And when he so cute, when he, right. when, he told, mean, when he told the host of the show again, a woman. Right. Boy, you're a mean person or something like that. I can't remember what the thing was he said exactly, but it was it wasn't nice and well, it's, it's, you're a nasty you're a nasty person. That's 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 he always says you're a nasty You're a nasty person. person. Then the whole audience laughed. What it is we are not yes. having a guy running for president. He's running to win last comic standing. <laughs> you know, and he does it goes up there and he doesn't act like a comic. Am I right? Mm-hmm. And they all want to laugh at him. They came for the laughs. They didn't come right. for the uh, for any kind of intelligent uh, discussion of the issues. And yeah, I mean, you know, it, he's yeah. a shepherd and they're sheep. Well, yeah, yeah, but I, I, I mean, I don't, uh, you know, I just, I don't understand why it's not okay for someone who supports him such as Phil or whatever, sometimes when he does things or says things to say, you know what, uh, that's not right. I don't agree with that. Or he shouldn't do that. And, or, you know, that's wrong or whatever. I mean, I've come on this program for years and been critical of Barack Obama. And, uh, you know, at, at times, I mean, not critical I mean, overall. I, was, I mean, I, I voted when, for when, it, when right? I, I mean, when I was at Sirius XM, I was critical of Barack Obama on many occasions. Yeah. Right. In fact, Same it may be the, it may be the reason I lost my job over there. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and and that's that's what I'm saying. Critical. That doesn't mean I still didn't like him. That I still didn't vote for him. That I still wasn't a supporter. 
But on this particular day, on Tuesday, the whatever, when he did something, I said, mm, I don't think that's what I'd have done. I don't like that. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I mean, I wasn't afraid to say it. I mean, you know, I mean, if you didn't agree or if it was wrong, say that it was wrong. Now, the difference between perhaps this and that is that when they did something wrong, it tended to be a policy that I didn't really support or think was the right way to go or whatever. And when Trump does, it tends to be something that's completely over the top, uh, anti-democratic, illegal, uh, you know, uh, uh, overtly racist <laughs> or whatever. And they still can't bring themselves to do it in the name of I, I don't know what. I mean, either they really have these deep feelings about America inside that they've never wanted to say. I mean. You know, that's what I'm saying about Trump. I mean, Trump's people consistently basically run America down. Everything is so bad. Everything is terrible. You know, it's just it's just awful. I mean, bad, 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 bad. I mean, they hate America, if you ask me. I mean, th they are doing exactly what they accused liberals or the libs or the Democrats or whatever of doing a decade ago. Oh, they just hate everything in America. They hate the military. They hate they hate everything. They hate, it's all so terrible. You know, this is the greatest country on earth, blah, 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 blah. And, and now they're the ones doing it. They, they do it every, every day. He goes on and tells you how terrible it is, how awful it is. You know, I mean, when you use a word like carnage in your, your inaugural address, uh, that's all you need to know. And they're doing exactly what they've accused them of doing and you were talking about this with bubbles before and we could go back and i've explained it and i said that we were due for one probably seven or eight years ago on this program when you started which is every 50 60 70 years we've had four or five in the history of this country of what historians call realigning elections where old is new and new is old and left is right and right is left and things happen that make you go, what? They used to be for this and they used to be for that. And well, an example I, to help I, everybody I, yeah, I, I can't figure understand out, it. I can't figure out you know? why the Republicans are the way they are now. Because right. they are they are standing behind things that they always were traditionally against. Well, I mean that that's what I'm saying is the electorate has had something happen, haven't figured that out yet, or whatever, that made a I think we're in 30 years, I think we can call it now, but in 30 years, they are going to say 2016 was a realigning election where the entire electorate and their traditions of the past decade since the last realigning election totally went yeah, but, awry. Here, and the here, establishment here, 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 of yeah. politics changed itself. Here's the thing I don't get them. about the Republicans. If this were the Republicans of, say, 30 years ago, and you had a guy like Trump, who cheated on his wife, was accused of raping a woman, uh, was accused of any number of just horrible things, you know, and all the things he did while he was in office and the January 6th stuff and the uh, document stuff. 30 years ago, the Republicans would have gone apoplectic. They wouldn't even let this guy run for president under their banner. But now they're and, and, and apparently and there's a party of rape and pillage and uh you know uh of stealing documents and uh oh they're yeah, also well, they're also very pro-russia they're pro-russia uh, yeah. okay w when, right. th that wasn't the republican party i knew about yeah right i mean that's what i'm saying is you know uh, prior to this you know the last time we probably had a large-scale realignment election was you know like 1968 for example right Democrats passed the Civil Rights Act and all this stuff, and all of a sudden, people who were Democrats were Republicans, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and you know, people, some people who were Republicans were now Democrats because of one or two major issues that made people, you know, set other things aside and flip flop. And we've reached a point where that kind of thing is happening. I mean, you know, that, that's, you know, Johnson passes the Civil Rights Act and says, Yay, we passed the Civil Rights Act, and, you know, Democrats won't win an election in the South for 50 more years. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, it changed the national political 
spectrum. I mean, I'm not a political science major or historian, but I'm well aware enough to know that that kind of stuff happens, and it's happening now, if you ask me. I mean, you know, and, and, and Trump was the cause of this one, which is fine. It's okay to have those. But these were far less over, like, politics and policy than they were just about uh, hatred, revenge, uh, you know, I mean, just just stuff like that. I mean, it, it's it's far less about policy and direction and things like that than it is about. Well, they would never. The Republicans would ne- the Republicans of yore would never want to even associate themselves with somebody like Trump. You know, right. I mean, he's he. They were always seem to be ultra moral. Okay, you know, yeah. God, country, uh, you know. Sure. And then all of a sudden, here's a guy who cheats on his wife. Uh, goes out and cheats on his wife while she's pregnant, I think, was mm-hmm. one of the cases. And and the, the, to them, this is okay now? This is the guy you back? Well, yeah. And, and I remember sitting in churches when I was younger, I don't know, nine, ten years old or whatever, mm-hmm. and, and hearing pastors adamantly tell the congregation, which they shouldn't have been doing, but they did anyway, that voting for Bill Clinton because of his character and his personal failures was damn yes. near sinful. Yes. It was a snub against God. You know? Right. And I mean, Bill Clinton, way back here, Trump, woo, way up here. <laughs> you know? But fast forward 30 years, and you have pastors telling you you have to vote for Trump. I mean, what? Yeah. <laughs> well, you got this you know, guy. You got this guy. What's his name? I don't get uh, it. George Santos. Okay. Perfect example. Here you got Kevin McCarthy, not defending George Santos, but saying, "Yeah, but well, we're not going to do anything until he's found guilty." But 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 can't bring himself to just do the right thing, right? He just can't do it. I mean, they're they're. If I were if I were uh, uh, yeah. if I were uh, uh, the Republicans there, I would be pressuring Santos to quit, saying we're not going to yeah. do this for you, and we're not going to do that for you, and you can just sit here in Congress with your finger up your butt and try and wait out the ne- till the next election, in which mm-hmm. you're going to be thrown out of office. There's no question about it. Sure. But uh, you know they should have they should have sat to Kevin McCarthy should have sat down with him and said, look, for the good of the party. You know, you say you're 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 here for the good of the party. Okay, mm-hmm. if you're here for the good of the party, get out of here. But he's not yeah. saying that. And why? Because his one vote could just throw off the balance of the majority that the Republicans have in Congress. Yeah. You know. So that you know, money talks, nobody walks, right? And I mean, and he's a he's a spineless person and a poor leader. I mean. You know, he's a person of no. Who, Kevin McCarthy I mean, or George you know, Santos? Well, both. <laughs> but I mean, that has been my re- my problem with Republicans these these last few years, e- even with the marginal ones. Okay, the Romneys and all the rest is they're they're people of no integrity. Now, I didn't say, oh, but everyone who's a Democrat's full of integrity, though. No, that's something stupid that you know. Someone else can come on here and say, I didn't say that. But I said, in my mind, people in the Republican Party and their, 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 their politicians are people of low integrity. I mean, Liz Cheney at least had, you know, at least kept her integrity intact by losing an election and then not crying about it and going home. But, you know, uh, um, but that's what I'm saying. I, I mean, I don't just I just you just have to forgive me because I don't trust Mitt Romney or or any of the others that are even, you know, they just tease you and make you think that they might possibly have woke up today as a decent human being. And then by dinner time they do something to make you say <laughs> they almost got me today. Yeah. You know, I mean, but the, but they didn't. You know, I mean, I mean, they maybe they got some people, but they didn't get me because I still don't trust. Them. Now, the other Republican that there, you know, that is somewhat in the race, even though he hasn't declared he's running, is DeSantis. Uh, and I'm wondering if he's even going to try to run. Uh, I don't know. 
I mean, but but you know, he, his his big problem is Bob Iger ain't taking crap out of him. Yeah. You know, the other day Bob Iger was saying, you know, this guy's a fool. He said, why yeah. is he coming after us? We pay. Do you know how much they pay in taxes every year? The Disney Corporation to the state of Florida. No, well, it's a few one, billions. No, one billion dollars a year. Yeah, I was say it's, it's a very high amount of money. One billion dollars a year, and they are the second largest employer in the state of Florida, after the state of Florida itself. Yeah, and I would assume I, I don't know, but I I don't even know if that includes the sales tax that they collect. Throughout all their entities, it's just basically the property, whatever the taxes right, right. are that you pay as a business. Yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, yeah, everyone who goes down there and spends money really racks up a decent amount of sales tax that they pay. You know, for the week or two that they're down there. You know, I mean, so yeah, I mean, I heard what you there were are a about lot of there are a lot of it. there are a lot of uh, states right now who are vying to get Disneyland or Disney oh, World. Hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're saying. I think. I think uh, South Carolina is one that has said, "Come see us." You know, well, any one you know. of these would be willing to hand them the state on platter, okay, mm -hmm. and yeah. probably help them move. You know, yeah, I'm sure they'd give them free land. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, and and if I were if I were Iger, I would probably say, okay. And if you don't stop what you're doing, we're getting up and we're pulling up stakes. But we're not going to yeah. give up the land. We're going to still hold on to the land so you can't do anything with it. And, and all of this, yeah. all of this nonsense that has been forgotten about that started a year ago or whatever, right, uh, is all started when a private company simply spoke out and disagreed with something that the legislature in their state had done. It's I know DeSantis now is saying, oh, it's because of they, they got all these these powers they're not supposed to have and all that, right? But none of that oh, was oh, wait, 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 nothing those until powers, they spoke up. Those are powers that the state gave them when they yes, went there and right. said, you know, you, you can, everything that's in Disney World, you can have control over. You can mm -hmm. ha you, you can have the fire department. You can have the police department. You, in other words, you have control over all of that. That was part of mm -hmm. the deal that was made. Yeah. Now, if that was unusual, I'd say, okay, then maybe it's time after so many years the state gets some of that back. Mm -hmm. There are a thousand other organizations in the yes. state of Florida that have the I same think... kind of exemption. Yeah, I mean, I and I... I don't think a lot of people know this. I've told you guys before, and I lived in Florida for a while, mm -hmm. and I know the villages, which I lived very close to, the villages down there had it. Uh, there was a developer down there named uh, Del Webb who mm -hmm. owned some housing who, developments Del like uh, Spruce Creek, et cetera. Del Webb, where, California. Where, He's in, Del Webb was in California. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he's known for building very high-end ones where you get – uh, I think John Travolta had a home down there, and they had a little runway strip in the back. Yeah. The Harrison Ford, people like that who fly themselves around and whatnot, they've all had that. But I'm saying that none of it was an issue until they spoke out in political opposition, okay? Yeah. And then they started this vendetta. And the same people that are on this jihad or whatever, uh, just not that long ago, were the same people that were telling you, oh, Citizens United is fine because a company should have free speech. And then one of them used it, except it was free speech that didn't agree with them, and then suddenly didn't well, matter. Well, anymore. Disney didn't do anything wrong. You know. All Disney did was disagree right. with DeSantis. Disagree yes. with something he was doing. Right. And uh, uh, and that was about all the anti-gay stuff. He which, which, like I said, yeah. 10 years ago, the Supreme Court said they had the right to do, and all of those course. very same people said... No, but what but, but this is, this is purely reprisals against Disney not agreeing with DeSantis. Yeah, you know, right. and their argument is you're trying to take economic sanction and uh, sanctions against us simply because we didn't agree with you. And what you've yeah. done, and one of the things he claimed he was going to do, I mean, all this is in the suit they filed, was mm -hmm. he claimed that well, we could always uh, move a uh, uh, next door, uh, we could move a, a prison next door to sure. Disney World. Well, yeah. you know, that's a threat. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, oh, by the way, somebody wrote here uh, uh, that the thing that uh, E. Jean Carroll is thinking of suing uh, hmm. uh, our boy for uh, Trump uh, is is again another bold statement that she was a whack job. That's what he called her on the on the uh, on the, on the, on the oh. town hall. Well, that's that's actionable. That's uh, you know. Hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I mean the the he, Disney deal. I don't, you know, I mean, DeSantis is deal with the nomination. You know, I don't know. I don't see a really a path for him. You know, honestly, I don't know if he wants to risk it. I, you know, I know he's wildly popular there, but I I don't find that that same stuff is going to play very well, you know. Well, my question, though, is how popular is he going to continue to be having yeah. literally ruffled Disney's feathers, who is yeah, a, a I mean, great it, contributor to the wealth of the state, to the income of the people there, and how many people work there that, uh, uh, hmm? you know, want to vote for him, you know? Yeah, hold on, hold on a second. I'm going to mm -hmm. go here and make sure this is somebody who says it is as they are uh matt are you there oh there he is there's matt sheridan hi matt good to see you again hi how are you yeah we've been hearing the discussion we've been mm. having oh yeah it's the uh uh is it desantis and his stupid yeah. war with disney yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i i was actually in the chat and i was i was writing like he's so like he's bought into this stupid like owning the libs thing where he might literally bankrupt his own state just so he could like I don't I don't know carry out a vendetta against Disney. Well, how many people work for Disney at Disney World, I and mean, how many of them are voters? You know, I mean, do you think mm. any of those? Do you think any of those people are going to vote for DeSantis, knowing that he's trying to threaten their jobs? You know. I mean, I did live in Florida, and there are a lot of fucking stupid people. So. Uh. Well, if I look. <laughs> you're talking to a guy who never loved Florida. You know, well, my, I heard a story a few years ago that because of global warming and the tides rising and everything, it may completely <laughs> submerge uh, Florida underwater. And I said, yeah, well, good well, riddance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It can't happen no, fast enough I didn't enough enjoy my me. permanent residency there either. But, I know that know. Jeff has a place he stays down there, but, uh, mm. you know. Mm. Mm. What were you going to say, Jeff? No, turn on your mic, Jeff. They sold the place. Oh, you there. you sold the place? Yeah, my friends owned it, and our friends from uh, Argentina mm -hmm. come up, and Pam is going to see them over this uh, weekend. Where? Because they're getting rid of all of their stuff. Down in Argentina. Yeah. Oh. But they come to Florida. Yeah. To Miami, and they own a, a whole know. bunch of property. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and they're yeah. pretty much saying, let's get out of here. What is all that stuff you have in back of you, Matt? Uh, the, I, I'm, a, I'm a New York Rangers fan. It's a, it's a hockey, it's a hockey, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> it looks like your uh, shirt. Um, it's, uh, it's just the animation of all the different players saying stuff like a comic book type of thing. Oh, and you're a big fan? Oh yeah, I'm a huge fan of the New York Rangers. I talk to Kevin sometimes in the chat about hockey. So yeah, yeah. yeah. A screwed up season right now. <laughs> oh yeah, the playoffs are all oh, jacked. Un unbelievable. I was so mad Chicago got the number one draft pick again. Yeah. Yeah. Seventy-seven thousand, seventy-five thousand. It says. Employees. Employees. It says Walt Disney, the world largest single employer in the world. Well, that's in the world uh, for Central Florida. As of 2021, a staggering 75,000 employees work for Disney in Central Florida. Wow, Ooh, wow. that's a, that's a large city. That's a, fairly, a that's a lot of votes. That's a lot of votes in a state that doesn't have a huge population. And all them you know. dumb shit sit down there and say, "You go woke, you go broke." Well, guess what? <laughs> They could. You know, I was somebody explained to me woke. Exactly. I want to know if I don't even woke. know what it is. And they I, sit there. I, and... Yeah, I, I mean, ask them to define it. I don't think they there is can. no definition for it. It's well, just some word they came up. What with. does woke mean? That 
you're 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 drinking and some kind of Kool Aid or something. Uses it all the time. It's a it doesn't even have to like mean anymore. anything anymore. Like it's almost like some stupid word they use to just shut down any argument or to just label someone or something they don't like. Yeah. And it doesn't have yeah. to make any sense. It's like some weird ambiguous bad feeling they have and it's like oh, they're it's, woke. What, is they're that woke. supposed to stop me like when they say well you're being woke and i'm supposed to go oh i'm so <laughs> no uh, uh, uh. yeah I got I, up this what? Morning. well it's yeah it's it's their like little i mean it's their republican bat signal or whatever you <laughs> it's a republican <laughs> bat signal. Exactly what what I, mean. said on a, I saw them do a little <laughs> quick interview and they were, they were asking well what happens if disney says oh one person says It'll be a dis- it'll be disabling for Florida if it, you know something happens, and the other one sits in the bar and says, "Well, you go woke, you go broke." Damn it! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you're going to go broke. I mean, if that state, if they say <laughs> adios, quite frankly, I'd like to see it. I would love to see it. And I mean, when DeSantis is gone and in the grave, Disney will still be swimming around in their swimming pools of money. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I mean, you know I where they are. I would assume. I mean, I could be wrong, but <laughs> you know something. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, 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 listen, Disney. Uh, even when right. they have a bad year, right? It ain't a bit like a bad year for you and I. You uh, know. Yeah. I mean, I I can't foresee them. You know, like filing for bankruptcy and ceasing to exist or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just, like I said, I, I mean, when I'm dead, Disney will be rich. I mean, the, you know, it's just I, well. Although you know, Disney, it's amazing what's happened to Disney over the years, is because Disney at one point was in a lot of was in bad shape. Yeah, they really were. in bad shape. Uh, just, just about the time that Disney, right after Disney died, and the son-in-law took over the company. Yeah, was, and they, they got a little out of hand there for what, like they. They tried to buy up all these sports networks and all that. Like they, they, you know, they were they bought a ESPN, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, they bought all that great big complex down there in Central Florida where the Braves had spring training and all that. That wild world of sports, and I mean, they spent hundreds of millions of dollars on all that shit. Yeah. All, they just they just got stupid, you know. And then, I mean, I don't really know that much about Disney, but it just was like someone came in and said, maybe let's go back to making you know kids movies and. <laughs> Well, I mean, no, what they did. Getting rich. The, pro- the problem was they had lost, they, they they lost the core of what they were doing. It wasn't until Eisner came back in, came in, that they began. He knew what Disney did best, and he knew how to make money out of it, and yeah. he turned that company yeah. around. You know, uh, and and under him it was true. Did you ever realize that if you take the word Eisner? And you change the first letter and the last letter, it becomes Disney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I felt he, he's a guy that turned the company around. But he was a pure, he, he part, he was part showbiz and he was part business, you know. Uh, or you know, maybe, or they, uh, maybe his statement should be, they don't call a show business for nothing, you know. Yeah. Y- yes. But. Wait a minute, hold on a second, Jeff has to, something else to say. What? I think it has to do with grandkids and children. And when everybody has a kid who's like five years old to, to teenager, they want to go there. And their parents want to take them there, and their grandparents want to take them yeah. there. And that's what the money is all about. Yeah, well, I mean, it, they, when he built that thing in Florida, they said this is going to be a disaster. Because they figured it's swamp land out there, you know. Yeah. And and it didn't turn out to be a disaster. It turned out to be a you know an incredible business. Yes. You know. Yeah, it's it's a mint where they make money. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you know. I mean, People but like, money if if it. if the government's going to take on a corporation or something, you know, for a good reason, fine. You know, thirty years ago, you know, Dupont is dumping stuff in the rivers. Yep. And, you know, we're going to go, okay, fine. But, you know, like, to go after Disney, you know, I mean, I know that some states are big entities and everything, but, I mean, you know, like at Disney, you know, like, go ahead and sue us. We got rooms full of lawyers. I mean, shit, 
the the fucking people that answer the phone for the lawyers is a fucking lawyer. I mean, you know, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I mean, they got nothing better to do anyway. Fuck it, go ahead and sue us. I mean, you know, I mean, you're not. Yeah. Like I said, if you're going to do that in the name of a good cause, fine. People will support well, you. I but... love the fact that uh, uh, that uh, that uh, <laughs> no. what's Iger is is such a tough business guy that he is he's not the kind that's going to back down to DeSantis by saying, "Oh, well, let's talk this over. Let's try and work this out." Oh yes, okay, and kissing his ass. No. Iger yeah. is turning around and just going, "Fuck you. We're not putting up with this. We're suing you." You know, and and then on top of that, he makes speeches at conferences and stuff where he puts DeSantis down, saying, "Is this guy crazy?" Yeah. You know, all and the it, money it really we pour into this anything. thing. What, what were you gonna say, Matthew? Uh, I was gonna say, are they real? Is there really? Are they close to moving out of the state? Oh no, like no, 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 no. They they haven't mentioned that yet. <clears throat> that would I would imagine that would come if if uh, DeSantis didn't back down, mm. okay? But you know they're going to sue him, and DeSantis is probably going to lose, and everything will be put back the way it was. In fact, it is the way it was. It's just that they're trying to say that they supersede Disney's. Uh, Disney just did some kind of action, and I don't know what it was exactly, but it was something. Where they 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 took back all of this and said well, we have our new board and they're in here and they're working and we're in charge of all of this. Yeah. And uh, uh, what were we gonna say? Uh, so look at the chat. Scott put in there what the definition of woke is. What the definition of woke is from the dictionary? Woke is an adjective derived from American vernacular English meaning alert to radical prejudice and discrimination. Well, what's wrong with that? How do, he says, how does that make any state go broke? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kudos, oh, Scott. God. I don't have that yeah. on my but we, Are we continuing, Matthew? Did you have something else you want oh, to no, say? Oh, no, no, uh, no. I, yeah. yeah, but I mean, it's, it's just, uh, he, he's, he's a moron. He's an absolute moron. And, uh, but these are the kind of politicians we have today, and this is the kind of politicians the Republicans are breeding and I can't believe it because, you know, I, I never was a Republican and I never liked the Republicans, but I never felt a visceral dislike for them because I felt there were some good Republicans that I liked and some bad Republicans that I didn't like. But uh, uh, now they just also in lockstep with each other that it's ridiculous, you know, and they're going <laughs> to bury themselves. Yeah. What? But it, it's just, it's hard to believe that they cannot see that it is not a winning formula to have the most powerful person in your party consistently refer to what you consider the second most powerful person in your party as Meatball Ron, you know? I mean, I mean can you not? I mean, yeah. that's like the head coach of your team referring to his assistant coach of your team every day as, you know, that dipshit who works for me or whatever. I mean, that's... Not well, he's, miss, he's missing no. out a good one. He should call him Ron DeSantos. Right. You know? <laughs> you know. So, I mean, how is that How is that a, a cohesive unit? How is that a winning team? How is that a, a, an organization that can work together and get stuff done? It's, it's ridiculous. Hey, listen, that's it. I, I'm playing the theme here. And uh, I don't know where everybody was tonight. But, uh, Jeff, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate the fact that Josh is here and uh, Kevin is here. And, Matthew, thanks for joining us and uh, adding, to the, adding to the conversation. Uh, you know. What? You can just call me Matt. Oh, Matt. I mean, Matthew. Matt. Oh, Matt. Okay. <laughs> Excuse thanks. me. Thanks. Oh, yeah, it is Matt Sheridan. I'm sorry, Matt. Uh, That's okay. I hate doing that. I hate when people... Call me Bernard. Anyway, uh, that's it. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. Thank you to uh, Josh, and thanks to Kevin, and thanks to Matt. Okay, and uh, if you'll all give a big wave goodbye, I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. I don't know where everybody was, but boy, this is this just makes me wonder whether I uh, should be doing this as much as I'm doing it. If I did it once a week. Maybe people would call like crazy. Um, and 
Oh, man. The allergies are just... The, forget it. I'm not going to complain about my health. Anyway, but it was a good show, and the people we had here were good people, and Josh is always a very intelligent guy to talk with, so it was okay. All right? Uh, anyway, and to the rest of you who didn't join us tonight, okay. And stay tuned now for Jack Bishop. He's got the intersection, and he'll be taking your calls at on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again on Monday with the pop-up show on uh, on Facebook, and then next Wednesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay. Good night, everybody. Mm-hmm.